We're going to have a war with the algorithm because this video is very anti-Google. So you know the drill. Upvote, comment, share the video, click on the bell icon, all that kind of stuff. We must defeat the algorithm. We are a long way away from the old don't be evil days. You know, I think a lot of people have this image in their head and it's been sticking in their head, maybe a little worse in recent years, but I think people are still stuck in the mid 2000s where they think of Google as this place that's really cool and laid back and there's no cubicles and natural earth tones and you can do yoga at the office, bring your dog in, there's beanbag chairs, video games, foosball tables, just come here, live and code away. And there's all these projects that Google was working on, but a lot of them just kind of came out and then disappeared. Is Google really an innovative company or are they just another rich company that wants all of your data and all of your money? Thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring. When you go and buy a regular key from Microsoft, it's not $22.54. And in fact, right now there's a mid-year mid sale, plus we have the 25% off with the coupon code TS25. So you're gonna get some money off of this as well. When you go and buy Windows 10 Pro or Home, uh, Windows 10, I believe, still activates Windows 11. So we've got Office 2021, 2019, and 2016 here. If you get an OEM key, the way it works is you're expected to do your own tech support. That's one of the reasons why the price is lower, but we all do our own tech support anyway, right? Then that key is technically locked to your hardware. You could buy like 10 of these keys for the price of a retail key. So I'll just buy another one the next time I move somewhere else. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, and then you'll see everything you've purchased right there. Just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. So that's why I use who keys. We need to talk about how Google started. People who are big fans of rich guys are not gonna like this part because Google started in an interesting way. It wasn't two super geniuses. Larry Page and Sergey Brin, they were at Stanford together and there was something else going on at Stanford at the time. Now the internet was in its infancy and there was a lot of digital documents out there. So Stanford had, uh, by means of a government grant and some help from with some public money, they had the Stanford Digital Library Project. and. You know, all this stuff was going crazy in this area of the world. The internet was about to explode and Sergey and Larry could see that. So they created a search engine or an indexing engine. And one of the things that really got them started was a $500,000 grant from the National Science Foundation. This is public money that helped them start their private business, which is kind of a thing we see a lot with people at the top. They get some some public money and turn it into something private, lock it down and then start making tons and tons of money. Now, not only did they have this, they also partnered with Stanford and they got access to all that cool digital library information and they used that to help build their product in the first place. So then they came out with a search engine. Now, how did Google win the search engine war in the first place? There were several search engines that came before Google, like Aliweb was the first, and then there was Ask Jeeves and a number of other ones. But something separated Google from a lot of the others and that was simplicity. You just went there, it was not much on a page, just a logo and a, and a search bar and you could type searches. The other thing that really separated it was their search page rank al algorithm, which like would rank the different pages. So they had all this stuff going on and you know they were eating through a lot of their government grant money and some other, they did have some other private investors and they were like, you know, well, let's let's monetize the hell out of this. Sergey Brin looked at it and he's like, we're serving a lot of pages. What if every time someone does a search, you know, the search is clean, but then their search results come back and there's advertisements in that. And that really, really, really gave them a ton of money to work with. And one of the things they did that in my opinion, was genius if you're a capitalist is they looked at the future of the internet and they said this is going to go in all different directions and the people who try to control it and set up walled gardens may have some success but they're not going to have all the success what we need to do is make sure that everywhere anyone goes we go with them if they want to search for something well they come to our website and search for it and then we follow them around and collect data and that's when Google really shifted from being uh, a search engine to being something more. They're not just selling the ads anymore. They're not just search, allowing you to search anymore. Now they're a data collection company and you are the product. So every time you use any of Google's stuff, they are harvesting all of your data. So early on, they did have some things they built in-house and like stuff like AdWords, their search program. They also developed Google Images, Google News, um, and then Google Maps came out and that was pretty big, but that was not developed by Google. 
and we're going to start to see a trend here with a lot of the things that Google does. There's two Danish brothers called Lars and Jens Rasmussen, and they created a, a little company called Where to Technologies, and that is what Google purchased to turn into Google Maps. So Google Maps was not an in-house development. It was, you know, what we see a lot of the big companies doing right now. Whenever they see any smaller companies doing anything innovative, they're like, that no, no, that's ours. Google Maps, and a lot of people think that Google just invented maps, but that's not how this works. They look at smaller companies, grab them up, pay them a ton of money, which is nice for those two, two brothers, and then they make it part of their online service platform where they can also monitor everywhere you're going so they can use that data to create a footprint for you and so they can use that to sell it to marketers and other companies. So it really helps to have a maps program that can track you everywhere you're going. And then Google started purchasing lots and lots of different platforms. You know, they, they had Google Video. Do you remember that? Does anybody remember Google Video? No, probably not. You remember YouTube though. A lot of people forget that YouTube was a private company. And it was a beautiful thing. It was amazing before Google bought it. It's kind of garbage now, but this goes in the beginning. I doubt Google's gonna monetize this, so please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and comment below just to help it maybe catch the algorithm. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be buried, but I'm making it anyway. Here's some stuff that Google created in-house and then canceled or purchased and then canceled. Most of it was created in-house. Google Buzz, that was a social media thing. Do you remember Google Buzz? Google Reader, that started in 2005. 2013 canceled. Google Answers was supposed to be a paid answer service. Nope, not anymore. Google Notebook, gone. Google Wave, <laughs> real-time communication uh, and collaboration. Remember that? Some people were pretty excited about that. Gone. Google Plus, no, it's, it's gone, which it actually did some interesting things above and beyond Facebook and all the other uh, online social media platforms, but no, it's gone. Google Glass, Ooh, remember all those glass holes walking around with that annoying thing? I think it might have been just a bit ahead of its time, and maybe we'll see something that looks a little more like a regular pair of glasses, but I think the idea will probably come back. I'm not going to say it's going to be good for society, but yeah, Google Glass, ahead of its time. Google Lively was a virtual reality platform that allowed users to create and customize 3D avatars and environments. It's, I don't even know. I don't even know what that one is. I'm just reading the definition. And then there was Google Video which failed and then they bought YouTube, of course. Google Page Creator, which was a web designer that they created. Google Health, gone. Google, hello. They've tried this whole messaging and stuff for a while. It had some artificial intelligence and machine learning features as well. Uh, Google Code, that's gone. And then there was Google Glass Enterprise, gone. Google Spaces, that's gone. Google Station and uh, Google Daydream. We could probably list a few more things that they've created and then canceled. So um, to be fair, I'm going to say that Google is not really an innovation company. They've been purchasing most things. But after I talk about some of the things they've purchased, I will talk about some of the stuff that they developed in-house. Before we get too deep into this, I want to mention that I've been organizing and folding a lot of shirts recently. And I opened up a box and found a whole bunch of these Google shirts. It's not why I made this video. It was like serendipity. I opened up the box while I'm in the middle of thinking about this video. And there's all these shirts. So I want to clear them out so I can make some free space on the shelf. So this is a perfect time to do it. Google does not care about you, but head over to epicpants.com. There's a sale section up on the top right. Or you can just click on the link in the description and get yourself one of these Google does not care about you shirts. Just to remind everybody because it's important to know. Plus, you know, even if you don't care about the shirt, it's extremely soft. Use it to sleep in or work out in or hang out at home. I don't care. So head over there and grab one of those shirts. Now we're going to talk about some of the stuff that Google has been purchasing. Over the many, many years, they have just continued to acquire small company after small company after big company after big company. They just keep acquiring more and more companies. Before I get into this, do I think that it is bad that a huge company continues to purchase the competition? Yeah, I do. I think it's bad for the consumer that, you know, when there's fewer choices out there and there's, there's you know, less competition, I think that that is ultimately bad for the customer. For instance, they purchased Waze. It allowed people to go on there in real time, give data back to the system to say like, hey, there's a cop over here. Hey, there's a slowdown here. Hey, this is going on. And that was some interesting technology that I think could have been developed further uh, had Google not come in and purchased it and integrated it into Google, uh, Google Maps. Maybe that would have spurred some more competition from different companies who had some other ideas. And maybe we would have more choices for, for maps because right now we don't have that many. 
There's Apple and there's Google and there's not much else and arguably there's only Google because Apple's not as good as Google's Maps program. All right, Google purchased YouTube. We all know about that. Did you know that Google did not develop Android in-house? It purchased the Android operating system. So that's where that came from. And now they can use Android as a way to monitor everything you're doing on your phone. Nest, which is another device. If you see how there's going to be a theme here, Nest is a device that's in your house and they can collect data all day long on what you're doing with your little Nest device. Can't even use it without a Google account anymore. They purchased DoubleClick, which was a um, competitor in the online ad space. They purchased Zagat. Is that how you say it? Zagat! They purchased them. Uh, it's a restaurant review site. Of course, all these things are going to be able to create profiles uh, you know, for you. Uh, DeepMind, which is an artificial intelligence research, doesn't seem to be helping Bard very much, though. God, what a mess. Motorola Mobility. And then they, you know, they use some of that technology in their Pixel phones, but Pixels are largely, are largely Google. I don't know, Motorola has some DNA still in there. Um, they developed Keyhole. I mean, they, they purchased Keyhole and Keyhole later on became Google Earth. So that's where that came from. Boston Dynamics. They, they purchased them, which is the robotics company that you're, you know you see all the time doing the crazy stuff online. They purchased Quick Office. I'm sure you've seen some of their DNA in the, the Google Office suite that you use online here and there. They purchased uh, Songza, which you probably see some of that DNA in Google Music. They purchased AdMob, which is a mobile advertising platform and that is pretty much just rolled right on into Google Ads. And to go along with that, there's also Channel Intelligence, which is a, an e-commerce solution that they use for Google Shopping. Then there's Wildfire. It's a social media marketing program. And it's all this is all just marketing stuff here. Titan Aerospace, high altitude drone technology. I imagine a lot of that's being used to help with the development of Google Earth or other similar platforms, but I'm not sure exactly all the things they're doing with that. I've done a lot of research for this, but I didn't get too far on that one. Looker is data analytics. They purchased that. Uh, Skybox Imaging is another satellite imaging program they have they've got a lot of they just want to monitor everything it's kind of creepy when i read through this list of all the stuff that they have synergize what a terrible name it's an interactive training for uh, google apps uh, zively is an internet of things company they purchased fabric which is mobile app development purchased famebit which is an influencer marketing so they own they own the ads and the marketing company for that and several others there's more that i, I could probably go through but we're, we're going to leave it alone right there now, the goal of a lot of these companies is not to really generate a profit on their own. It's to make sure that every time you go online, they have a hand in that. They have a little bit of something going on there. Every time you go from website to website, you don't have to be going from some Google service to some other Google service. You can be going from totally different websites but they have Google Analytics running in the background of all of those websites. They have Google, uh, their, their Google cookies in the background. There's Google ads going on there. So they're able to create a footprint and follow you everywhere you go. Then you go leave your house. They're following you with Google Maps. They have Android on your phone. They can pretty much track everything you're doing and build an amazing profile. They know you better than you know yourself. They know you better than the governments know you. When people worry about the governments having too much information, well, Google has too much information. Now, people say like, hey, look, they're only doing what the governments allow them to do. And that's not true. Let me just read you a few times that Google has been fined for illegally collecting data. This is a long list. We're going to go through it pretty quickly. 20, uh, 2012, they were fined $22.5 million by the FTC for misleading users about the use of its cookie on the Safari web browser. 2014, fined $150,000 by the French Data Protection Authority. 2017, fined $2.5 Four two billion by the uh, EU Commission for violating antitrust rules. 2018, they were fined 4.3 billion by the EU. In 2019, 57 million by the French Data Protection Authority. 2019 again, 50 million by the French Data Protection Authority. 2013, 17 million by the US FTC. 2019, 170 70 million. These are not in the right order. Just the order I found them and put them in the list. Uh, 2019, Google was fined 170 million by the FTC. 2020, 8 million from the Swedish Data Protection Authority. 2021, 220 million by the French Competition Authority. 2021, 102 million by the Italian Competition Authority. 2012, 900 million by the Spanish Data Protection Agency. 2013, 145,000 from the Dutch <laughs> Data Protection Agency. 17 million in 2023 from the Attorney General of New York. Um, that was for, <laughs> Jesus, for tracking Safari users without their consent. 2016, 100 million by the Italian Data Protection Authority. 2020, 5 billion by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. 2020, 
1.7 million by the Korean Communications Commission, 2020, 600,000 by the French Data Protection Authority, and 100 million in 2021 by the Italian Competition Authority. This list is incomplete. Hmm. I hope you liked my Notepad++ notes that I've taken there. Yeah, this is, um, they, they don't care. They just keep doing it because all of these fines add up to billions of dollars. But they're making gazillions of dollars by doing these things, so they don't care. That's probably why they removed the don't be evil thing from their website and from all of their properties, because they realized that by being evil, they could make a lot more money. Google is not about innovation. Google stifles a lot of innovation by grabbing up innovative companies and then forcing them to work inside their ecosystem so that they can better track what you're doing at all times. They don't care about getting fined. They'll get fined over and over and over again and they'll make statements saying like, hey, we're trying to do better. You're trying to do better. <laughs> okay, then maybe you just don't, but they, but they keep tracking everyone online. So yeah, they're, they're not innovators. They're just really good at collecting data and collecting money. Let me know what you think of the comments. This was a lot of, I didn't expect to do this much research and I've left a lot of things out of this video. And it, this originally started as me going on about Bard because I've been on this AI kick for a while. But yeah, oh, last little section here. To be fair, here's a few cool things that Google has made in-house recently that are I guess, technically innovations. So they made Google Assistant that was made in-house in 2016. You can yell and scream one way or the other, whether, you're not, whether or not you think that's a good thing or a bad thing. There's probably some nu nuance in there. I don't use Google Assistant, but they did make that in-house and it is a thing. Google Meet is also something they made right around the time of, uh, you know, when we're all gonna be home for extended periods of time. So that came out in 2017, that's recent. Uh, Google Pixel devices, I guess they kind of, I don't know if I can give that to them or not because they bought Android and they bought Motorola and, you know, they're saying, here's our Pixel smartphones. This is our innovation. So it's like, okay, yeah, maybe. And then the last thing is Google Stadia, but really they, they bought another company to create Google Stadia. That was a company, I think, based in Toronto, but they really did the Stadia stuff themselves. But they did buy some companies to help them with the technology. All right, so head over to EpicPants.com and grab one of those shirts. They're awesome. You know, we were doing a, a marketing thing and I was with a few people and one of them was wearing this shirt and someone started cracking up. And I was like, what is it? And they were like, that shirt is amazing. And the person who said that works for Google in the marketing department. And they said that the, this shirt that you're seeing on the screen right here was amazing. So just remember, Google does not care about you. See you next time.